Hi guys, how you doing? It's Marshall. I'm working on a truck today. It's a 2018 Freightliner Cascadia, and this truck's got a leaking brake chamber. This is um, uh, gonna be a video uh, on showing you how to change a brake chamber, diagnosing it, and showing showing you how to replace it. Uh, this is the rear left brake chamber, and uh, the way you diagnose it is um, you apply air to it and once you apply air to it it's gonna leak and then that's how you know that it's defective I'm gonna go in the truck real quick and I, um, I, I chalk the wheel on the truck and I'm going to go apply the air to the brake and you see how it's leaking So this is a pretty audible leak. This brake chamber is defective. It needs to be replaced. Pretty audible leak. So I'm gonna walk you through the steps of changing one. And uh, I just uh, come along on the ride and I'll show you how to replace it. So, the process of replacing brake chamber is you have to obviously dismount it. There's two bolts in the back, and then there's a pin that hooks up to your to your slack adjuster. Um, let me go around from the rear of the truck. It's two bolts, that bolt and the one at the bottom. Then you uh, take off the pin on the slack adjuster and you take off these two lines. Just please note, see where you're taking off these two lines because if you, if you cross them, then this thing won't work. Um, one is service and one is emergency. This is parking and this is service. So just take note of it. If you have to mark them, just mark them. But if you can look closely, this one is skinnier than this one. This one is skinnier than this one. Just take note of that. If you have to mark them, just mark them. And I'll put part P and S. P and S, then you put P and S on your, on a, on your, uh, on your um, new one, then you just put them on appropriately. But uh, I'm gonna start working on taking this off. And once uh, I take the bolts off, take the uh, pin off and take these lines off, I'll dismount it then um, make sure when you start taking off you don't have any air applied to it so then it's it's in its resting position once i have it off i'll show you how it looks like okay so underneath the truck the back the rear uh just take off these bolts right here ah this one kind of sucks because you can't put any ratchet uh so you have to use the manual a manual wrench to so take it off one thread at a time just uh one thread at a time and then you do this one as well uh, I have to break this one then after that you take off the, these the airlines and you take off this pin right here for the slack adjuster, there's two pins, front one and back one, then this thing is ready to come off. All right, so once you take off the bolts, take off the pins and take off the airlines, this uh, will be ready to drop, you drop it. Then I'm uh, ready to install the new one. I am going to show you some bench work that we do because we have to change these, switch these over to the new one because the new one doesn't come with uh, these fittings so we have to move these over uh, just pay attention to the orientation you know orientation they're facing up just make sure the new ones you put them facing up so that your airlines will fit on there without fighting them or twisting them but anyway uh, let me show you the the prep work 
uh, you know, moving these over. It's pretty simple. Take it off, put some pipe thread, thread pipe uh, compound, and uh, just put them on. And we'll bring the new one. We we'll set it in place, and we'll be good to go to reinstall. Okay, so this is the new brake chamber. I'm using a universal one. Uh, you can just, if, if you want it, just go get the OG one that is welded on and ready to go. But those are more expensive. So what you do is you get a universal one. You have to cut it, this rod, to make sure, you know, you're going to fit make sure you're gonna fit the same as uh, you know so 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 you have the same 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 size rod you know you're just gonna cut it where you need to the best way to do it is to obviously measure measure this then uh, once you have a measurement I don't have a tape measure I mean I do have one but I would have to dig for it so measure this and make sure you have the same length for example i'm 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 this much to the bottom of the hole this much to the bottom of the hole so on this one set that the bottom of the hole so i'm gonna cut i'm gonna cut it pretty pretty down there where and if I cut it, I'm going to sit. If I cut it right there, where I marked it, I can be able to screw it in. Screw in my... Uh, screw in to the bottom of the hole. I do sideways like this to the bottom of the hole then if I cut it you know I, I have a little bit of slack in there so I can cut it you know I can cut it with a couple a couple threads over so if I cut it right 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 there I'll have enough thread uh, to where I can Let me take the set screw off and then remeasure it. Well, it's still it's still marked. If I cut it right there, by the time I screw in, screw in this, I'm at the top of the of the thread. I'm gonna show you how to cut it, and um, and we'll go from there. All right. So before you make your cut, it is of utmost utmost paramount importance to make sure you double check your your length and. Uh, that when you cut it, you cut it as cleanly as possible so you can be able to thread on back to the thread. Um, if you cut, cut it jagged, it, it, it's harder to thread. Um, to thread, because if you mess up the threads at the beginning, it'll be harder to thread. You can use a hacksaw, but I use a, I use a sawzo. I use a sawzo. I'm going to cut it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't cut it and and hold the camera as I do it. But I'm gonna cut it, and I'll show you when it's done cutting. It's it's important to double check your lengths because once you cut it, you can't put material. It's better to overcut it than to undercut it. But um, and the cleaner the cut is, the better it is. Let me show you when it's done. All right, I'm done cutting it. So the cleaner, the straighter the cut the easier it is for you to be able to re-thread it back on like that you see that that didn't even take much effort that did not take much effort it's just putting it back on then once it's once it's back on uh, stand it up next to the old one and just just match the heights match match the heights and once your heights are matched you know just you know use let me yeah let me show you with this one just use this 
I'll use this use this bolt as a marker tighten it on to the top then I'll use this as my gauge the top of the bolt the bottom of the bolt is touching the top of the shackle I'll do the same on this side tighten it in until the top of the bolt is touching the bottom of the shackle and we are good to go um, on this particular one um, I didn't have any slack on it to be able to use uh, a lock nut lock nut so I'll put it on this thing doesn't twist to turn and once you put it on there it's fine it doesn't it doesn't come off because once you put the slack adjuster it's not gonna spin so we're gonna go mount this on the truck it's the same height now I'm gonna mount it on the truck and we should be good to go oh yeah one other crucial step that I left out is changing these airline fittings over so you see the service one is fatter and the and the parking one is is skinnier so parking is over here and service is over there so I'm gonna take the service and put them to service and parking and put it to parking and then we'll just pay attention to the orientation again pay attention to the orientation these are gonna be facing up which is this way so I'll just I'll just set it next day then I'll make sure these are facing up when I put them up there all right we just put them on there make sure you should use your pipe thread compound I use just pipe pipe thread sealant I just use that stuff uh, some people would like to put uh, uh, thread tape Teflon tape but you know for me it's just you know this this stuff is easier to handle it's easier to use so I just use it and it's 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 it's, it's good so uh, we'll go and mount it on the truck and and then we'll go from there all right so after you mount the new brake chamber Mount it, mount it, put the pin, put the pin. Service line. Emergency line. Uh, a trick that I learned is for, cause this, this is spring loaded when you put it back on. So you take this uh, caging bolt, you cage it, then that pulls this in. Then you can uh, st put, start your bolts, run your bolts. Then you can take the caging bolt off and put it back in uh, right there. But uh, this this unit is now fixed. Uh, the it's not leaking air anymore. It's we already tested it. Uh, in some instances, you might have to adjust your brakes. Uh, we'll leave that video for another for another time. How to adjust brakes on a truck. But uh, yeah, that's how you change the brake chamber uh, on a truck. Make sure you double check. You know, put use the use the new hardware, the new pins, and the new quarter pins that it comes with. The, make sure everything is tight nice and tight then test it out Ugh, this is nice and tight and uh, thanks for watching the video please like share and subscribe and uh, look out for more content this one is a wrap this is how you change a brake chamber on a semi truck thanks